This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. If you're a U.S. citizen planning for retirement, one of the biggest components is going to be social security income. And there's a big decision that you have to make starting at age 62, which is should you take it or should you not take it? So in this video, I'm not necessarily giving you specific advice on what you should or should not do. I'm only giving you something that I think a lot of people fail to consider when they're making this very important decision. So for those of you that aren't aware of how Social Security works, basically the idea is you get, based on your working history, some amount of money each month sent to you by the government. So the more money you make, the more Social Security benefits you're ultimately able to earn. And if you're not sure what your benefits are, you can go to ss.gov and type in your information, and it will tell you based upon your working history, this is how much you're going to be able to collect starting at age 62. And then if you wait uh, you know, until I think it's 66, they tell you how much you would earn then, and if you wait until 70. So let's say, for example, you are entitled to monthly benefits of $2,000 per month starting at age 62. This benefit would increase by an annualized rate of 8% each month that you delay. So in this case, waiting from 62 to age 63 would increase your monthly benefits to $2,160 per month. So the longer you wait, the more monthly income you get. However, there's a point at which it would pay to start early. So for example, let's say you were going to die and you knew this ahead of time, you knew you were going to die at age 70. Well, then of course you would prefer to start your social security as soon as possible because the amount of money you're going to collect over this eight years is more than you would collect, obviously, by waiting until 70 when you die and you can collect a higher number, but obviously you're dead, so you're not going to collect it. However, if you're going to live until, say, 85, now it makes sense to wait until you're age 70 to collect. Because the higher amount of money you're going to get here will eventually overcome all of the missed months that you would have been collecting until 70. But in this video, I don't want to appeal to your mathematical senses. I want to appeal to just basic logic using a four scenario analysis. Let's say on one quadrant, we're going to have when you took Social Security. So up here we have late and over here we have early and on this axis we're going to have your life expectancy you live until age 62 and then each one of these is an additional year until ultimately you get to let's say age 100 and we'll say this represents the crossover point at which it basically makes no difference whether you take early or late which, don't quote me on this, is somewhere around your 80s. So let's just say this is like age 82. And again, somebody can calculate these numbers on your behalf, but just for illustration, let's say this is age 82. And on this early scenario, say you collected Social Security starting at 62, and in this one you delayed until, say, age 70. So under our first scenario, when you decided to delay your Social Security until age 70, and you live to be 100, you were much better off to delay, right? So this was the correct decision for you financially. And on the other end, let's say you decided to collect Social Security early and you died early, right? You died starting at age uh, 62. It's a kind of a bad example. Let's say this is actually a 70. So you die at age 70. So it was the correct financial decision to collect your Social Security early because at least you got to collect for those eight years before you passed away. Now let's go to the bad scenarios. So the bad scenario here is that you died at age 70, which was before you could collect any Social Security. And this is the basically the only reason people argue for taking it sooner is, well, what happens if I die? I won't be able to get all the money out of the Social Security that I put in. 
So that leads people into this bucket, the fear of this happening. But there's also a scenario where I think people fail to consider, and that is if you take it early at age 62 and you live a long time, now you're going to have made the incorrect financial decision by taking it early. Okay, so here we have a bit of a conundrum. So there's two scenarios where you would have made the correct financial decision, and there's two scenarios where you would have made the incorrect financial decision. So it's basically a coin flip. Do you think your life expectancy is going to be beyond a certain age or not and decide appropriately? Obviously, there's some cases where someone has a pre-existing condition or some reason that they have to say, you know what, I'm probably not going to live that long. I'd rather take my Social Security early, and maybe that makes sense. So, And again, this is a personal decision that depends on your financial and medical situation, so do not take this as advice. However, there is something I think you should consider, and that is the severity of each of these situations is a lot different, particularly in the context of your outside assets. For example, let's say in this situation, you also have an IRA and some other savings outside of just Social Security only. And the main objective of retirement is to not run out of money, right? That's at least for most people, that's their main goal. So if you were to happen to end up in this situation where you took Social Security late, but you also died at age 70, what is the probability that you ran out of money? Uh, it's not very high, right? Because your investment assets would have barely been touched. Let's say you retired at 62 and used this IRA account to fund your expenses. You probably still had a pretty good amount of money left in the IRA since you were most likely planning to live longer than age 70. You probably saved enough that this IRA is going to sustain you over this time period. So while you did not collect Social Security, you accomplished the main goal, which was to not run out of money. However, this other situation where you took Social Security early, this could have potentially more devastating consequences. So maybe you built up your IRA account and you had only planned to live until, say, age 90. Well, you now lived an unexpectedly long time. So it's possible that you start to put too much pressure on this IRA account. It's also possible that investment returns aren't as good as you expected. Waiting for Social Security gets you a guaranteed 8% inflation adjusted return, whereas most investment assets are not going to provide that good of returns. Plus, this is 100% guaranteed, and the returns in the stock market or real estate or business are not going to be guaranteed. Plus, as you age, you're going to have increased medical expenses, so it's often very handy to have a little extra money coming in each month that you could use to offset those. And of course, in the other two scenarios, you've made the correct financial decision, so you're optimizing that. But between these two suboptimal choices, I think this scenario here represents the one that represents the most financial peril to you should you make the wrong decision. I would encourage you, if you are considering this decision for yourself, it's money well spent to sit down with a CPA or a certified financial planner and go through different scenarios and see what they would recommend. A lot of times these people will do it for some flat fee. You can often pay them, and I think this is much better than you trying to make this decision on your own. As always, thank you to everyone who is currently supporting me on Patreon and YouTube Premium. For those of you who have purchased my valuation course, I'm planning on coming out with the discounted cash flow method at some point before year-end 2022. I've been a little sick, so it's kind of delayed my progress on getting that out, but I'm hoping to get that done within the next couple of weeks. I know several of you have expressed interest uh, in knowing more about how to do discounted cash flow analysis, so apologize for the delay on that, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting that out uh, as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.